Welcome to the Maverick Paradox podcast, where we explore what it is to be a maverick and discover effective modes of leadership. I am Judith Germain, and my mission is to propel the maverick mindset into a world where character and integrity will ultimately have a higher premium than personality and bureaucracy. So thank you for joining me on this journey. If you'd like to continue with me, then please download future episodes on iTunes. And today we have Dr. Glenn Wallace, who develops leaders for improved results. Hi, Glenn. Hello there, Jude. How are you? I am very good and excited to have you on this call. Yeah, me too. I'm really looking forward to um, following on from, from our last conversation. So thank you for inviting me back. Obviously, didn't do too bad a job from, uh, from the last time. <laughs> really looking forward to digging into to another area in relation to the whole kind of maverick topic, which um, I'm genuinely finding fascinating. And when I'm, I'm talking to other people in my business life about it, they're, they're finding it interesting too. So you've, you seem to have hit on a rich theme, I think. Oh, well, that's always good to hear. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, what other questions did you have then? Because you you sort of tested me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to um, sort of broaden the the conversation out from sort of gen- generally uh, looking at the kind of mavericks and and the sort of development of the maverick mindset and the maverick behaviours to specifically within the context of of organisations. I know you do a lot of your work, and I do you know a lot of my work in organisations where you know leaders are. Under, come under a lot of pressure uh, and and organizations are trying to shape behaviors of leaders and I, I'd love to try to contextualize your work into um, yeah, organizational life and, and leadership particularly if that's okay cool let's go okay great so so a, a question that's been kind of nagging at me since we spoke last is kind of why would we bother if I was an organization if I was an HR director or head of learning and development why would I want to develop more mavericks or why would i want to you know why would i want to engage you for you know looking at this whole topic of where's the value for my organization um probably twofold if you've if you've got genuine mavericks in your organization i.e socialized ones or extreme mavericks then you need to deal with them a certain way for productivity and also the health mental health of the rest of the organization so for example if we looked at extreme mavericks they will Yes, causing lots of uh, personnel problems with others, but they will be taking the risks, they will be bringing in the money, they will be challenging the organisation to be better and different. And organisations do need that energy, but what they don't need is all the problems that extreme mavericks bring with them. Socialised mavericks are a lot um, harder to see, probably, because they will be demonstrating fantastic leadership. So they will be great influencers, they will get improved engagement. One of the things that socialised Mavericks are very good at is taking the vision and the mission of an organisation and translating that in a way that their employees stand building. So what happens is the socialised Maverick takes their own reputation, which is quite, and lends it to the organisation. So what happens that the employees are drawn to the socialised Maverick and they will follow them in a way that they wouldn't follow mm. the organisation. And finally, maverick behaviours who borrow socialised maverick folks at work. I think almost every socialised maverick leader I've ever met were engaged in trying to get more leaders, more maverick behaviours. And that's because the maverick behaviours will do things that a conformist will do. They will take risks, they will stand up and say, what we're doing is wrong, we need to do something different, or this doesn't make any sense. So you have a situation where you have engaged employees, employees all working like leaders in the organisation, which makes it more productive and faster, and being engaged means that they'll be better, be better for the customers of that. Okay, okay. Um, the thing that struck me is I can think of some clients and certainly some sectors where the kind of drive and the competitiveness and the ruthlessness that you spoke about in relation to extreme maverick um, seems to be a premium, in fact. Um, and so why wouldn't I, again, why, if, I, if I put myself in an HRD or a head of learning and development role, why wouldn't I want to be, why don't I want to be building that than softening that to sort of some, some of the more socialised behaviours? Oh, right, so just keep, keep making people extreme. Is that, what you, is that sorry? 
Well, I don't know, keep making them. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, some of those must be the very highest performance. You know, so you, I can think of, I won't name particular because I don't think that's fair because I don't want to make a sort of sweeping statement about, you know, certain roles and certain types of business. But I can think of, of several where that extreme, it seems to be valued by the organisation. The fact that there's a car crash behind them is, is, is beside the point. But why, I, I, yeah, I think it's, why well, I want to keep hold of that, wouldn't I, as, a, as an HRD? That's an interesting one. I think we just need to look at every single financial crisis and, and it'll make us realise why we don't want to do that. Um, Interesting. You, you happened to choose the financial sector. I wasn't going to name names. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. If, if the extreme memory is driven not by the greater good, like the socialised memory. They're driven as what it me. Right. So if you have an organisation and you say, I will give you a bonus of this if you can make a million pounds, they don't care. So the socialised maverick will care how that money is spent. The extreme maverick won't. Right. Okay. So yeah. So it, yeah. what you want really is more socialised mavericks because they are socially responsible. So they have all the benefits yeah. of the extreme, yeah. but also they have the benefits of responsibility because they feel they have a duty. Ah, oh, no, that's an, okay. That's a really interesting point you've hit on there because I think when in my understanding of it the first time round, and I think you've really helped clarify something because I, I, I was under the impression wrongly clearly mm -hmm. that socialized mavericks kind of lost some of that drive and competitiveness because they're a kind of softer version uh, of extreme but you're saying actually they retain all the best bits uh of extreme maverick <laughs> um uh, but but learn how to use that in a kind of context like an organization for example is that, is that right yes because it's it's the socialized mavericks they're not socialized performers. right yeah yeah so it's so it's yeah. different yeah that's important. Very important. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. I have to make sure I'm clear when I think about it. No, no, it wasn't you. I think I was just getting carried away with <laughs> <laughs> with with um, the versions of this. Okay, so so we've got we've got your extreme mavericks, your, your socialized mavericks, and then we've got kind of maverick behaviorists. Um, there's a set of you know really useful um, behaviors, mindsets, kind of approaches to things, makeup in terms of somebody's actual makeup. And I think in our last. Um, conversation you spoke about that kind of being you know largely nature with some learned element to it um it's interesting that you spoke about socialized mavericks and leadership can you kind of expand on that a little bit because uh, leadership's my the kind of work that i do is almost entirely exclusively with leaders so it'd be great to get a sense of socialized mavericks in the role of you know organizational leaders okay um i would say that socialized maverick is the best right? and You'd be right. pleased to say that because you can put, you know, pat yourself on the back there. Um, and the reason I say that <laughs> is because they're driven. So they're driven to get things done. So right. the work will be done, right? The work will be done, um, when they say it will do. So they're very good at analyzing how long something will take and they will factor in known and almost unknown to see next week because they, they'll build that time in. They'll make sure it's done and it will be done ethically. And it will be done in a way that um, people are proud to be with. They're very good influencers. Right. They understand people extremely well. And they are very good connectors. So they always know who has the ability to do what in every department that ever touches yeah. on anything they might possibly have to do with. Right? So they make themselves right. known yeah. and they look for the connectors. So a maver uh, socialised maverick, when they are leading in a position of, the, of leadership, what they will do is they will find out uh, very quickly what needs to be done. They'll make sure it's done and it can be done in a pretty different way. They will carry the people with them. And more than that, the people they work with will enjoy working with them. You know, they will have fun doing what they're doing and they will okay. be the most productive, <clears throat> engaged department head for the rest of the organisation. Okay, so that, that naturally, so the thought that's going around in my head is, a, is the assumption I'm about to make correct, <laughs> which is that socialised mavericks have a very high degree of emotional intelligence. Yes. What's the relationship between maverickness and emotional intelligence, would you say? Right. I would say that it's very high. Um, but what they have, I say, like in my book, which is the maverick paradox, the secret power behind successful leaders, is what they have is more than emotional intelligence. They have emotional awareness. And what I'm saying, that is, it is, yes, the emotional intelligence, so, it, you know, the ability to understand 
other people so that you can respond appropriately. They also know social yeah. intelligence very well, so they understand the social dynamics and how to interact with them. And then they have this other mm-hmm. element, which I've called the temperature check, and that's the ability to predict and understand, nurture and control the environment and the people. So the temperature check is that, um, you probably do that when you when you work an organisation, you can walk into an office and stand there, um, and within two, three minutes, you can tell whether the people are happy to work there, how busy mm-hmm. the department is, whether the department knows what it's talking about, um, and how it's respected by others. And that is just by standing there, listening to the bars, listening to the conversations that's going on, looking, observing what um, what people are doing in their facial expressions, and how it feels, a big sense of how does it feel mm-hmm. when I walk in. You know, so when, it's, when you're um, managing by walking about, for example, just by walking through the department, very good idea exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an interesting kind of intuitive thing. So I've often said that organisations have a character in the same way that people do. And, and you do get that sense when you're sitting in the foyer, just the interactions between people, the state of the place. And, and sometimes you get that wrong in the same way that I think you intuit about people. And you know, But stuff unfolds, right, and, and will kind of either um, support or, or undermine the, the sort of assumptions that you might have made or the or the judgments that you might have made, I guess. The thing about... Um, so- that's really interesting, though. Sorry, go on. The thing about socialised mavericks is, unlike the others, other people like conformists um, and extreme mavericks, some of the maverick behaviours, is that we're not tied to our initial opinion. So if other facts come in right. that demonstrate you're <laughs> we wrong, we're like, oh, okay then, because there's no ego attached to the assumption you've made. So we don't have to struggle with, oh, I now feel stupid, or I was wrong, or now I've got to go and tell Glenn that I, I got it wrong. It's like, oh, I have better data now. That's great. Um, right. So I would say that you could do that, have that emotional awareness of the situation, and then so like Maverick, take that as a, a data point. So that will put, that provides you something to look into. Yeah. doesn't mean yeah. that it's, I've made a decision and I've fixed on it, but it's, it gives me an indication that maybe this department is respected by other people. Um, and that could be just someone coming off the phone for another department, slamming the phone down, going, ah, oh, oh, that's something worth looking Yeah. Uh, now, that's really, so you've, you've mentioned one of my favourite three-letter words, which is ego. <laughs> so that now leads me into another really interesting kind of leadership piece, which is how do, how do Mavericks wield power then? So if they're, uh, I, again, I, I, I'm going to, well, I'll, I'll let you kind of fill us in on the detail of that. But I am interested in the dynamic then between, um, perhaps the different types of mavericks and their relationship to power and how they wield it in a in a organisational context. That's a, that's a great question. Um, when you if you ever if you took a traditional approach and you studied power, um, there's these two guys, French and Raven, and they came up with things that I guess that you get taught when you do any kind of psychology or CIPD, and that's things like positional power, reward, coerciveness, reference expert information and that looks at the different types of power that you can on. But Mavericks is different because the Mavericks say there is nobody on this earth that has authority over me unless I give it. And I will do that on a temporary okay. basis and if it doesn't work out, take it back. <laughs> so initially so straight right. away, you know, the fact that you're the boss of somebody or you're paid more means nothing. Right? And the reason mm. um, Mavericks are able to world power is because they understand that dynamic. You know, I will, I have power because I say I, and conformists will follow right. the person that appears. But what the Mavericks also yeah. have is this other dimension, which is the internal power. So they understand and able to use body language really, really well. So they know that so when they're saying something, they're watching to see how people respond. Right? And they have an emotional resilience. So they know how to face down reality and they'll always look this big search for meaning and they like to right. um, take, they, they, they have a ingenuity, so they will look for what's around. So if they've got to achieve something and it's always done in a certain way and that way isn't working, they'll look around and go, oh, if I take a little bit from finance and I'll add it a bit over to the marketing, I've created this new thing that's going to work. No. You know, they do that. And the final thing is that they're yeah. self determination So they will decide what they want, not somebody else. And I think the question you had is about the different type of mavericks and how they 
dealing with it is a really, again, a really, really interesting one because the extreme maverick has a higher degree of ego. Social life maverick almost has no ego. It's like, you know, we'll do whatever works and that's fine and I'll, I'll have right. it. It suits my purposes to give you the bent, you know, give you the accolades for the work we've done because it makes the team stronger. Right. An extreme maverick yeah. would never do that. So they're always, um, the objectivity is always compromised by how how much they've adored by everyone. <laughs> so they would use right. their, <laughs> which is a sad thing, but they would use their power in a way for self-interest. I'm powerful and I will manipulate people to make sure I stay. The socialized mandarin yeah. holds power loosely because they know they always have it. So they'll, all be, they'll always be looking to yeah. use that power for the greater good, not for... And sometimes they'll work against their self-interest if it's best. So sometimes I think social right. mavericks are like, a bit like Spock. You know, the needs of the many can outweigh the needs <laughs> of the one. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I love the way you've just described that. So, so it, that, that's landed for me as, as uh, I just want to test this with you really so that I can kind of frame it for myself. It's not exclusively, but, but, but your, your extreme mavericks you know, wield external power for the internal benefit and, and sort of socialized mavericks have such a, a great deal of internal power that they use it for external benefit. And, and I'm not sure that that's not absolutely definitive, but there seems to be a, that's how you, well, that's how it landed for me in terms of the description of, of the way that the two might use power very differently. Yes, I love it. I've written it down. If you allow me, I'd love to use it in my <laughs> second book. That's a great way of explaining it. Perfect. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> Please. Uh, it's just really interesting because you know there is that classic piece about you know power being uh, ego being you know about you know the, the sooner I get the spotlight shined on me the better and let's hold it there and I'll use everything I can to make myself sort of centre of attention you know it's one element of how you could look at ego and it just feels that there's a yeah there's a real kind of a fundamental difference of purpose for power for the two different types of mavericks. That's right. So if you went into a... That's why people always recognise them as being maverick, because they'll be the one strutting. They'll be the one with a loud... You know, you don't get introverted in maverick. If it's possible. You know, they will be the one in the room speaking right. loudly to everybody's watching. They'll be the one that says, no, you can't do that, do it my way. Whereas the socialised maverick can often be... Me. They will stand quietly in the room, but their own sense of presence will draw people towards them anyway. They... You know, they're the sort right. of people that would speak last, because that's a good leadership point anyway. But they're comfortable and confident mm -hmm. in their own ability. They don't need to show off. If they, you know, they're, they're likely the ones that will say, yeah, that can be done. And the one you can think of, give an explanation. Yeah. This is going to be done, I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really interesting. Uh, how does that play into a uh, really, uh, I mean, very... Um, High profile and, and rightly so kind of issue at the moment in, in terms of the whole kind of gender piece, not just in terms of pay, but in terms of female leaders, you know, and, and increasingly senior female leaders in organizations and the challenges that organizations have got. Um, sort of briefly, what, what's the sort of situation in relation to from the research and the conversation you've had, a kind of gender split in terms of maverickness? And what about sort of maverick female maverick leaders and some of the benefits of, of those would be would be great to understand some more about thank you um almost all extreme mavericks will be men um and i think okay. that is because the world does not ex accept extreme women put it on the moment right and all mavericks want to be influential and get what they want so a, a female maverick might play with extreme for a little while, realise it doesn't work because they won't get the same deference at the moment. Um, so then they'll skip right. straight into social. Um, socialised mavericks, you have male and female, and they're probably more equal um, in the split. Although I would say um, it's harder for a man who's a socialised maverick in the sense that they tend to be surrounded by a lot of extreme people or conformists, and their method, socialised maverick method of leadership, is much more feminine. So some conformists will be uh, speaking to the man and saying you should, you know, you should push harder. Because socialised mavericks collaborate as a matter of course in default mode. And for some organisations, they think leadership is all about um, control and dominance, which, as you know, it isn't. Does that answer the question? 
Yeah, it really does. Yeah, it's, um, I, I, I think there's some of the traits that you've spoken about and some of the advantages of social mavericks in, in an organizational space, and, and particularly when we relate that to the power piece. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some really, I, you know, when I coach female leaders, one of the things that I kind of like so some of them see and, and they come to me for is almost exercising their maverick muscles oh, cool. a little more, you know, and, uh, and, I, and I think that if you take the best parts of, of your maverick model and say, actually, as a socialized maverick, you're going to add value to, to an organization, whether you're male or, or female as a leader, you know, some of the, I, I think just over the, the years, not by design, I've coached more senior women uh, than men, and I think there's there's some mileage in you know women looking at the model and going, yeah, I can I I can do that. I don't need to I don't need to be a man leader. I just need to stretch and flex into some of the things that just make for great leadership, ir irrespective of gender. And and actually, I can give myself permission to to do some of these slightly more you know maverick ways of being. And I think that that would be uh, a quite liberating <laughs> from from conversations that I've had with female leaders, and and also really beneficial for the organisation too. Yeah, because what you're doing is correcting more maverick behaviour. And yeah, exactly. But regardless of gender, yeah, right? Exactly. And I think that's what makes the yeah. organisation strong because you need somebody to you need yeah. people to say if we do what we've always done, we're not going to get anywhere. Let's do something different. And it, yeah. you know, and organisations need to wake up and understand that they need to do that especially now with millennials because what millennials want to do they want what mavericks demand right and they so they demand leaders that are can be trusted <laughs> they, and be inspiring mm. they want power they want status they want influence they want control they want autonomy unfortunately a, a high degree of those millennials do not have that naturally because they've not had experience or or, or age could be an issue. They're just not been in the organisations have changed, they're not really developing. But if you look if you think about it and just logically, why shouldn't people have these things as a matter of right anyway? Right? Why should you, you spend most of your time mm. at work? Mm. Why should you go to work and work for somebody you don't trust? <laughs> it's just silly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and the fact that the millennials yeah. are you know, within the next two, three years, are going to be the biggest proportion of the generations that are in the workplace. Organisations need to wake up quickly and realise, you know, these people, what they want is what they should have anyway. It's what a maverick would demand. You know. Give me autonomy. Mm -hmm. Give me the respect to the job on me. Tell me the truth. You know, no, no maverick. A maverick will stand there yeah. in front of their manager and say, no, nope, still not convinced I should do this. No, nope, still not convinced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and um it's, yeah. it's, it's the right i think it's the right approach mm. no i can see i can see that being incredibly you know they're, they're just as you say they're, they're just good behaviors and and good they, they set the scene for good human interaction and and then from an organizational perspective you know set the scene for great performance it, why would you why would you not i guess is the question that i've exactly, i mean because the bottom line is improved immensely and you know Employees that are engaged and want to be at work has a significant impact with the customer. You know, you can tell, mm. even if you case whether whether it's a restaurant business, whether it's an insurance company, whether it's a bank, you know, you can tell, you know, especially if you become more attuned to it. You, know, you can walk into an organisation and go, mm, you know, and it doesn't matter how much branding mm. that you have um, or how much how great the vision statement is. I met one maverick who said to me, because he, he does some interesting work, he said, I've noticed that the companies that shout about their values the most are the ones with the worst. I thought, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, um, it, it, it's sometimes a, you, you just want good, you just want good people that, that are going to do the right thing. And I think this, I think the other thing that maverick um, uh, you know, with, with the definition and the way that you've described them, will also bring is is some of that corporate social responsibility and kind of ethical behaviour. Um, you know, when done well. So, so you know, not not the extreme mavericks. They're, they're probably going to upset the apple cart. But, but, but well managed and well developed in the right way. Um, it sounds like, it, with all the challenges that we've got in terms of regulation and um, 
you know, the sort of legal side of, of some of the, the lines that organizations have, have been accused of crossing, then you, you kind of want to build some of that. You know, I know, I know what's right. Yeah. And I've got a clear sense of that and, and, and clear conviction about what that is. People will follow that. Um, and we're quite happy to hold people to account. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. And they'll come up with innovative Great solutions stuff. which will cost less money. Because obviously, if you have the will mm. of your employee, it costs less things. Because there's a, there's a, um, a trust tax, if, if you will. So if an employee yeah. trusts the management or trusts the company, then they will do things right for you. If they don't trust you, every single time you want to do something, they'll be saying, why? Why should I do that? And what happened? What's in it? Mm. In it? And all of a sudden, that builds into cost. So you're actually taxed for being um, trust, not having the right trust to actually tax by everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and people want to be led, right? I mean, you know, people, as long as they can answer the question, why would I want to be led by you? You know, which is not my own question as well. You know, it's a well hackneyed kind of question. But I think if people can answer that question, yeah. You know, then, then, frankly, you know, they they will follow strong leadership and want to, because because if they're a conformist, um, they'll they'll want to they'll which is fifty whatever you said last time I think it was like fifty five percent of the of the population. Then most people want to want to lead a good leader, want to follow a good leader. You know, that's that's kind of they're happy to do that. I remember years and years, years ago, I had an employee who was older, which is quite typical for young. Um, and she said to me, "I really wish you'd run to be an MP," and I was like. Why? She goes, because you'd be the one I could trust. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> but I kind of looked at that as a compliment. <laughs> she goes, I'm not even sure of your politics, but yeah. I know that you would tell me the truth. I was like, wow, that's quite a compliment. Yeah, and I guess that speaks to sort of Mavericks being, you know, socialised Mavericks having a very clear sense of their own values and, you know, and a strength around those. And, and whilst you've, you've rightly said that they're probably pretty adapt, adaptable and flexible, I'm guessing also they would, have a, they would be able to you know, verbalise and communicate and convince and influence others you know that actually you know this is this is how we do things around here and you know if, if you if you're in if you're in then you're in and i you know I'd, i would think people would kind of end up walking over hot coals for them yeah and that's or not or not actually perhaps perhaps it's quite but is it quite binary is it you know in the sense that there's a clarity that kind of goes it really works for me and then I, i'll throw everything into it i think it's i think it's binary for the socialized maverick i think but i don't think it appears to be binary so right. <laughs> I think if yeah. it's um, if yeah. they have an employee that is just don't have the value, they will work with them to see if they will align. Like, if they won't align the value, right. then they'll yeah. be working with them. But it would be done in the right, right. and the yeah. right way. But they will not in the right yeah, way. They won't have yeah. someone on the team that doesn't that won't trust them. Yeah, they can't, uh, fantastic. You can't work with people. Yeah, yeah, very cool. I think that's probably a good place to end. What do you think? Great. Well, fantastic. I've learned a lot again. <laughs> so thank you very much for inviting me in, uh, along for this chat. It's been very, very insightful as always. Thank you. And I do hope you come back because your questions always put me on hot. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Great stuff. Thank you once again for tuning into the Maverick Paradox podcast. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my conversation with Glenn as much as I enjoyed having it. If you would like to learn more about Mavericks and leadership, then please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Stitcher or one of the other popular podcast platforms. Alternatively, apply to join the Maverick Paradox exclusive Facebook group. My website is maverickparadox.com. Find out how willful independence can ultimately change all our futures. Thanks again and see you soon.